Coast looks clear, no R2-D2. I think we're good to go. Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're gonna be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo missions, which also happens to be R2's favorite NASA mission. So I thought we would go ahead and build the command service module and looter module from Metal Earth and give it to him as a gift. Groove Builders, let's get down to the workbench and build this model before he finds us. Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. We have our Apollo Command Space Module with Lunar Module from Metal Earth. And take a look at this silver and gold detail. Really neat, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we get a brief history of the Apollo mission, followed by some instructions on how to build our model. Then at the bottom here, we get to look at some other models in the series. And then on the right, we have a QR code which we can scan to get a 360 view of our model while we're building. Finally, at the bottom, we have a difficulty rating, and this one looks pretty difficult, Groove Builders. Let's go ahead and open up our package. We have our instructions. And we have our three sheets of metal. Look at this. Very cool. It's actually four sheets of metal. All right, Groove Builders, let's get building. And just like that, we've cut out all of our parts needed for the first two pages of our build. Let's start with part number one. Just gonna bend this guy very easily, both of the sides here 90 degrees along that little perforated line right there. Very nice and simple. Our first part all finished. Let's move on to part number two here. This is the engraved side here is bent upwards like that. Engraved side here as well. We want a nice little bend. Trying to get any hot spots and we're gonna possibly have to bend this a little bit more in a moment. Now when it gets down to here, you need to make sure that these bends are very nice and sharp because they are not the same as the other ones. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can move on to part number three here. Again, making sure that the engraved side is out. We're gonna slightly bend this top tab here. There we go. This part right here gets bent slightly up. All right, now we got those two parts bent. We're gonna go ahead and attach this now to our piece. Okay, now with that attached, grab part number three here, and we're going to put everything together. This is where you might have to make some small corrections in your bend. You really do wanna match up those seams the best you possibly can. I'm gonna attach my tab here first, and then I'm gonna work the pieces together. Very good, that's our first few steps complete. Now we need to move on to the next part here with part number four. I love how all of these parts look, but you know, to make life a little bit easier, we're gonna take these tabs here and bend them just a little bit like that. Now it looks like I have a little piece of metal here that I need to take off. Now when you're cutting your pieces out, always make sure you get all these little bits off. Make it very hard to put your pieces together in the future if they're not all taken off. Those are called burrs, pain in the butt. Schnazzy, schnazzy. Okay, let's get to part number five here. This part here, we're gonna take the center and we're gonna do this and then we're gonna bring this down just like that. And then we're gonna have this part come just 90. And there we go. 
we have our part all nice and formed. With that, we can now take this piece here and line her up. And there we go, it's our first two steps. Let's move on to our next part, which has us doing our first piece all over again, part number one. Really nice and sharp bends is what we want. Very good. Taking our pieces here again, just slightly bending these guys. But again, we're going to use our tools to actually help us get the right shape that we want. All right, that's nice and connected. Let's move on to our next piece here, which has us forming some really interesting cylinders. Now, when it comes to these little pieces here, you wanna make sure all this engraved detail is on the outside and visible. If you have a little tiny mandrill that can help you with this part, I would recommend using it. Otherwise, you're gonna be forming it with your tweezers. Let me show you how to do that. First, take your pedal and slightly bend it forward. Then, make a bunch of tiny bends starting on the outside and working your way in. You're just going to bend it away from you. Then go the other side and do the same thing. Remember, bend it away from you. Then you'll notice I'm doing a lot of bends here. I'm not just doing one. What that's going to do is that's going to help me create a cone and I should get a nice shape. Now I'm going to just grab my little edges here and try to bend those almost 90 if I can. And now I'm gonna start squeezing together. Just a little bit of pressure, nothing too crazy. And they should just meet. That looks pretty good. You can see how on the bottom though, I have this massive split. So let's try to, let's try to even that out a little bit too. There we go. That's our first cone all finished and pretty simple too. But again, it's just about shaping and taking as many bends as possible. Now, let's try doing these with another tool. Now you can see that both these methods gave me a similar look, although the one with the mandrel does look slightly better. Whichever way you do it, it's more about being consistent. So if you feel better doing it with your hands, do it with your hands. If you feel better doing it with a mandrel, do it with a mandrel. But whatever way you do it, just do it the same way. There we go. We have our part all finished up and now we need to move on to part number 12 here, which has us bending a whole lot of really interesting bends. Okay, now let's do this one at a time here. We're gonna bend it just down enough so that our little notches here all meet. That was a tricky little bit there. Not very easy, but we got her done. Now we need to attach this on to part number 13 right here. Making sure that little bubble here at the bottom is at the bottom. 
and this little vent here goes at the bottom too. Now we might have to slightly bend some of our tabs to get them in correctly, but we're going to try what we have right here. We got these bottom ones done, so we're going to go ahead and just secure those and we'll work the other ones in with our detailed tweezers if they're too complicated. So let's see here at the top. Ooh, that was a tricky one, but we got her in there and with no scratching. Now these little tabs here, I'm gonna grab and bring out just a little bit. There we go. I will have to rebend these a little later, but for right now, we're just bringing them out. There we go. Awesome, pretty good. Now we can move on to part number 14 here, which is a simple little rectangle we gotta form. Okay, and now that that rectangle's formed, we place that up here. Now we're just gonna have to do these boosters all over again, but I'm gonna fast forward so we don't have to witness this all over again. Now we're gonna take our two little boosters here and we're gonna put them into their spots. Now these tabs might have to work a little bit to get them to fit, but they will fit. Oh wow, look at that, that was really simple. I thought that was gonna be a tricky step. I'm sure I'll pay for it later. Okay, okay, okay. We got our boosters on. We're looking really solid. But now we need to bend this little antenna here and that is going to be very interesting. I'm gonna do this first, bend it this way and then I'm gonna slowly do the bend. All right, now with that bent, we need to put part 15 in between our two spots and um, I think that this might be okay, but later tricky because I always have a hard time putting two halves together. There we go. And we're gonna twist this here. I always feel like I'm gonna break these pieces when I'm putting them together like this every time. And uh, that's why. Now we're gonna grab part number 16 here. The first thing we're gonna do is bend all of our detail in like this and then match up all of those little sides. Remember, we don't want any gaps at all when we're bending our builds. There we go. <laughs> that was not an easy bend. That was not an easy go at all. Actually, that was a lot more complicated than it need to be. And that's because these pieces are very finely put together. And if you're not careful, you will bend it the wrong way. But we got her the right way now. And that's all that matters. Let's continue adding our parts together by forming this little back piece here that we need to do individually. Now the trick to this is to go ahead and again, bend everything down, matching all those seams. Okay, and that is our last tab there. Now we need to get more parts. And that's all of our parts needed for page number four. Let's go ahead and get started here with a familiar part number 15 here. We're just gonna take this part and quite simply bend it in half. The better than 90, the better the part. Now this guy here gets inserted right along where the other one was. Excellent. Okay, now we can grab part number 19 
and very similar to what we did before, we're gonna bend it. Okay, that looks all right. I'm not too happy with how everything's fitting together, but we can try our next few pieces and see how that looks. Let's grab them right here. Now this one is a very simple little little adjustment. Just that is all we need. I do have a little burr there on the side I'm gonna take care of. Nasty little burr. There we go. Awesome, awesome. Let's move on to our next piece here, which is just a, basically a little dome. And it looks like I got a little burr there too. Let's see if we can take that off before we go any further. There we go. Now let's clean this up here. Again, we're just gonna follow all the seams, making sure that we're referencing our instructions. We don't wanna accidentally bend something the wrong way here. Which should go in a lot easier than the other ones did. Just make sure that little envelope piece is on the lower right hand side here. That's right there, very important. Looking good, looking good. So this is our back right here, and this right here is our front. Let's try to keep that in mind. Grabbing part number 23 and 22. Again, just going around in a circle here, trying to make sure that everything looks good. Now this little guy here gets put at the bottom of our space shuttle, but that doesn't look too good. I'm gonna fix that up right there. I'll round that out a little bit, okay. Now we're gonna attach this to the bottom of our craft here. That little booster there is on the bottom. Now we get to work with some of our gold pieces, which is pretty exciting. We're gonna need our big number 25 here. And then our gold pieces, number 24. With our engraving here in the middle, we're gonna take our little bar and we're gonna bend it up. Now, I don't expect both sides to go up equally, but what we can do is we can straighten them out once they're bent, just like that. Same thing with the other side. And the reason why we're doing this is we don't accidentally wanna bend that little tab there in the center, because we're gonna take that tab and we're gonna bend it straight down. All of our little legs here are bent. Now I'm sure we're gonna come back here in a moment and bend them correctly, but right now they're fine the way they are. Let's continue on with part number 26 and 27. These little guys here are bending another dish. Now the last few, I've done a pretty good job of shaping myself. These ones here, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Now we're just gonna attach part 27 here. Just make sure that you don't accidentally attach them to the inner insertion holes. You wanna attach them to the outer insertion holes. And that is our plate there on the back all secured with our four holes nice and open. All right, let's grab part 28 now and we're gonna match all the seams here like we've done with a few other pieces. making sure I alternate the other direction. This will make sure that the part is really nice and connected and straight. That looks really cool. Okay, there we go. All finished up and that looks really neat. Now we need to form another cone here. Cone, yes. I did accidentally shape this the wrong way, and that's why I'm going back and fixing it. If I didn't, unfortunately, all that detail on the inside wouldn't have been seen, and I think that would have negatively impacted my model. So, best to take it apart now and deal it up real quickly. Okay, and there is part 29. 
just like our other booster. It looks really cool on the inside. I'm kind of upset that I messed up that part, but it looks okay now that everything is attached. Let's place it along the center here and try to get it in those four holes, which I've gone ahead and just bent those tabs straight. Let's see if, uh, let's see if it's easy or not. Okay, that's our cone attached and it looks pretty good. I think that maybe if I wouldn't have messed it up, it would have been a little bit more straight, but maybe by the end I can figure it out. Let's go ahead and attach our next piece, which is part number 30 here. Now it's very important to make sure that again, the top here is the non-engraved side. So that means this part right here, we wanna make sure is down. And then we're gonna put this on like so. Okay, and that is us all attached. Looking really awesome. Now we need more parts. And we're ready for page number five. And this one looks like a little bit of a doozy. Let's get started with part number 31. This one here is pretty simple to get started with. All we're doing is of course matching all the seams here for part number 32 and then attaching it on. Make sure of course that you're bending with the engraved side out. I think I could look a little better, but we're okay. Let's move on to our next step, which is pretty much just adding a whole bunch of parts together. Okay, I have the shape that we want. It's a little bit weird, but we're gonna continue on and see if things get a little bit better. Okay, move this right here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend our little detail piece here. Now we need to add the upper part here and we need to line up this part here, this like square piece along with this little box. So let's just do that now, being very careful not to scratch any detail. There we go, all finished up there. Now we can move on to adding more detail on with these little tiny feet right here. All right, that looks really good. Now we gotta work on building a little bit more of add-on detail.
And there we go. All of our detail for page five. Now we need more parts for page six. And just like that, we have all of our pieces needed for page six. And I've went ahead and just made all of these little guys here just because they're very repetitive. It's the same ones we did earlier. We just make them to a bunch of cones. And this time, instead of attaching them onto our model, we're gonna wait till the very end. And that's because these guys are very delicate. And if you're handling your model too much, you might accidentally break one of these off. So again, we'll install these on the end. Put this down for now. And let's get back to our feet here. And that is our last leg. Thank goodness, this is definitely not a fun part of the build. Let's put that down and now move on to our next part, which is part 46. Now 46 gets bent into an interesting shape. We're gonna bend the sides here first and then we're gonna match all of our seams together. Let's do that now. There we go. With part 47's detail all finished up, we get to move on to our next cone shape here. And this is very important. We want this engraved detail on the outside. Now, just like before, we're gonna go all the way around. Awesome, awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's put this down and move on to part 49 here. And this part, what we're doing is we're just forming all the sides down. Again, like we've done before with our detail, but this time we wanna make sure that everything lines up really well, especially with that detail on here. looking kind of neat now we need to move on to this little part here yet another cone but this one's kind of different because this one's going to help us put on our big cone onto part number 49 here there we go all nice and attached now we gotta attach this onto our bigger piece here. That looks so cool. I love these models. I really, truly do love the look of these space models. Now for part 51. These tabs are all inserted on the inside tabs, not the outside ones. Make sure you're putting them on the right ones. Very neat. Now it's time to add all of our detail onto this guy right here. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is get this nice and shaped. I think that looks pretty good. Now we can add some of our add-on detail, and I'm not gonna lie, I got to work a little bit on it, so I did form of it already, but for the most part, it's just squares. They're really easy to do, and I'm assuming if you're building this, you've done them before, they're really easy to follow, and that's these little pieces right here. They're kind of squares. So again, sorry I didn't fold those on camera, but that's where they are. 
All right, so let's now continue on with our build. We're gonna fold this guy in half. And push it together, boom. Now we're going to seek out. I know it told me not to, not to close it and don't necessarily close it at home. The reason why I did this was because I was jumping ahead a little bit. Don't do it. This will make it a little bit harder for me to actually get everything attached evenly inside of here. Um, just save your time and headache at home. Attach these on before closing the cylinder. All right, now watch me struggle. There's all of our detail on, except for the boosters. Like I said, we're gonna wait till the end for those. So let's move on to page seven. And I think we're gonna need a few more parts. And now we have all of our pieces needed for page seven and eight. That means everything here is all we have for our build. Groovers, let's get started. Now, the first thing we're doing on page seven is taking our body that we just formed and then adding this on top. Now, it's very important that we make sure it's on the correct way. So line up the detail that you see there on the paper, just like so. You wanna look for those three little, three little boxes right there. And now we look for the two little teeth on top in the orientation of the satellite and we place her down on top. I'm gonna secure these tabs here with a little twist. I think that's best here. Cool. And now we're gonna be forming this little tiny like stair piece here, 56. And it doesn't tell us engraved side or not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the engraved side on the inside because I think that's an ugly bit there. Cool. Now this is attached right here on the lower edge. There's our stand, putting our stand aside now. We get to our final cone. Okay, it's our second last cone. But with same with this one, like the other ones, we gotta be careful with all of this etched on detail. It's very easy to create a hot spot in those and we don't wanna do that. So round it the best we possibly can. Now with our engraved side here up, we're going to attach this onto that base we just formed. Let's find those holes, there they are. And with our long pieces here on the top, we're gonna go ahead and place our first side in here. Now this ring here gets placed on the back make sure you put it into the right insertion holes and that's not the ones on the outside. These ones go on the inside. Twist and bend again towards the middle. There we go. Very neat, very neat. Now we need to move on to part 62, which is this guy right here. And what we're gonna do with part 62 is form part 10, this little guy right here, and put that onto the dish. This is actually our last dish. I said the last one was, but I'm sorry, this is our last cone. I know I said the other one was, but nope, this one is actually the last one. OK, 
Okay, now we're gonna make sure the detail here is on top before we go and attach our pieces together. This looks so cool. Make sure our detail's out of the way. We definitely have some touch-ups to do here. Okay, our last little booster there is added on. Oh, look at that. So cool, so sharp. Let's put her down there. Now we're just gonna bend this little plate just like so. That is a great little build. We did it, Groove Builders. We built the Command Service Module and Lunar Module from Metal Earth. And this build looks awesome when it's complete. That gold and silver, I think R2 is really going to like this. But if you're looking to build it at home, there are a few things you're going to want to know. Let's talk about those things in construction. For my first point, I want to talk about all these small boosters that we have over our two modules. They really do make the modules look nice, however, they do make putting our detail on a little bit difficult, because if you aren't careful, you'll accidentally break them if you install them when the instructions tell you to. My suggestion would be to wait and install these little boosters on until the very end. Doing this will make sure that they look really nice. For my second point, there's quite a few cones on this build, which if you're new to metal model building, might pose a little bit of a challenge. My recommendation is to try to find something around your home if you think you might have a challenge with them to help you get the right shape. If you can't, go slowly with your tweezers, making small bends until the pieces connect. As long as your seams, insertion holes, and tabs are lined up, you should have a pretty nicely shaped cone. For my third and final point, this model really does require you to be accurate with your bends. And if you're putting two parts together and you see a gap between them, you might want to take them apart and try reforming them again. Doing so will save you a lot of time down the road when you're putting all of your parts together. I found that some of my parts that weren't necessarily shaped the best made it really difficult for me to connect parts together later on down when I was forming the bigger pieces here. Don't waste your time. Just go back and reform them in the first place and you should have a really nicely shaped model. And with that being said, Groove Builders, let's move on to build time. The Command Service Module and Lunar Module from Metal Earth took me just over four hours to build, with the majority of that time being spent, of course, on the Lunar Module with all of its small detail. Now, Groove Builders, it's never a race to get these builds complete, because once you're done, you are done. So make sure you take your time and have fun. And finally, Groove Builders, my thoughts. The Apollo Command Service Module and Lunar Module from Metal Earth is a great build. And yes, I'm saying that right out of the gate. This is probably my favorite space build that I've done here so far on the show, not just because of all the really cool detail that we're forming, but just because of how it's designed. I mean, this thing looks really, really good when it's complete, especially with all this gold back here. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this gold back here, or bronze if you will, is very, very delicate, and you do have to be careful when forming it. If you're not, you might accidentally break one or two pieces, like one of the feet right here is already starting to bend. That's a little bit frustrating and something that I'm going to have to work out a little bit later. Another thing that's a little bit frustrating, which I didn't mention in my three points, is getting this lunar module here together. Combining all of our pieces to create this little cage right here can be a little bit challenging. Don't forget that you can always twist your tabs temporarily before folding them over. Again though, just be careful with this gold, bronzy color metal. You really can break it easy. All in all, I really would recommend this build for mid-range builders up to our experts. If you get any space fan this build, they're gonna love it. 
All right, group builders, that brings us to the end of our show. I had a really good time building this with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we got all kinds of really cool videos like this coming out in the future. Thanks again to Metalur for supplying this build. It was really one of my favorites so far. And now I just have to present it to R2-D2. I think he's really going to like it. All right, Groove Builders, until next time, keep building. Ha ha ha.